was asked to lead a, a wilderness a canoeing trip in the boundary waters of uh, northeastern Minnesota. And uh, that really sparked my interest in, in backpacking, canoeing, rock climbing, that sort of thing. So that was sort of an avocational uh, interest. And then in uh, beginning my doctoral studies in the late 80s at the University of Chicago, I took a a course from uh, a gentleman whose research interests were in uh, ecological theology and ethics, and that really spurred my interest in terms of my own uh, scholarly research and writing. In fact, I changed my whole uh, probable doctoral dissertation topic from one thing to um, environmental theology, which I eventually uh, wrote a doctoral dissertation in that area, and that was my first book called The Greening of Theology. My, my Christian worldview, my Christian uh, beliefs as a theologian and philosopher, ethicist, really uh, influenced my thinking about the environment very early on. Uh, the course that I took at the University of Chicago, I was a doctoral student in the Divinity School, so studying religion generally and Christian theology and ethics more particularly um, really whetted my appetite to learn more. So I began a couple year research program with my doctoral research and explored, read very widely in the history of Christianity, in Christian ethics, Christian theology, uh, particularly looking for people and themes that uh, connected with uh, environmental issues of one way or another. I also read environmental history, environmental philosophy, so I was coming at it from that point of view. I also began to reread the Bible. In seminary, I'd been given some tools to read scripture. I taught Greek. I learned Greek and then taught Greek and learned Hebrew and had courses in biblical studies. And while I'd been reading the Bible my whole life, I grew up in a Christian family going to church, um, I never really paid much attention to much of what's in scriptures. The Bible begins, for example, with rivers and trees. It also ends with rivers and trees. And there's a lot in scripture uh, that pertains to um, earth keeping, uh, caring for creation, stewardship. With respect to, you know, what can we do? Uh, I could mention lots of things, and there are lots of books that are out by Christians and others, uh, good books that, that give us tips on things we can do to make the world a better place, to be better earth keepers. Um, the key issue there, though, I think, is not so much the specific um, issues that we need to address and the specific things we ought to do, but what is a common feeling among many people, not just college students, namely that the problems of the world, especially the environmental problems, seem both so intractable and so large that what can one person do? What can little old me do in the face of, say, global climate change or uh, uh, species extinction, loss of biodiversity, and so on and so forth. So, I think there's much that could be said about that, but one thing in particular is um, to remember the power of one and not to be what ethicists call uh, a consequentialist. Consequentialism is, I think, the dominant ethic of American culture. That's a long philosophical term for the view that says simply that one should do something only if the uh, potential consequences, good consequences of doing it, are very evident. One should pick up that piece of litter or, you know, engage in whatever action you think is moral or ethical, if and only if there is a great likelihood that there'll be um, large uh, positive consequences. And I think we need to avoid being consequentialist because, you know, as I walk through Centennial Park on my way to work every day, that ethic says to me, don't pick up that piece of litter. It's a, it's a small thing. It's not going to make any difference. Don't do those little things that, that often add up. If Rosa Parks had been a consequentialist, she would have gone to the back of the bus because she would have said, what can little old me do? Right? What's one person, one thing? It'll make no difference. So why vote? Why do the little things that will make the world a better place? The... Uh, the ethic over against that is simply to following Spike Lee, the African-American filmmaker, an old film, uh, do the right thing. Jesus wasn't a consequentialist. King wasn't a consequentialist. Simply do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And, you know, you never know what good consequences might come. Leave those to God. Do the right thing and 
Remember the African proverb, I have it on my office door where I teach. Many little people in many little places doing many little things just might change the world.